Hey, what's up guys? It's Texuma talking to you here. And today, let's talk about the M1X Mac Mini that John Poster leaked last week. So, before we start, roll the intro. The M1X Mac Mini was leaked by John Prosser last week on Fraud Page Tech. He showed us some renders done by Ian that show us the new M1X redesigned Mac Mini. The new design is similar to the old one, but with some differences. It doesn't have that fit anymore, so it's not as tall, it's thinner. Also, the top plate is not aluminium anymore. It's more like a polycarbonate glass-like, so much more closer to the old, old Mac Mini, so the old one where you have plastics. This could suggest we could have different colors, we don't know. John Prosser just gave us a little sneak peek. But could you imagine a green Mac Mini, or even a black Mac Mini, or even a pink Mac Mini? That would be funny, wouldn't it? But the main interest on this Mac Mini is the fact that it could feature an M1X, which would be Apple's most powerful chip for as low as $1,100. So this is quite cheap, even cheaper than an upgraded MacBook Air or even a base model MacBook Pro 13 inch. That would be insane that you could get an M1X, which is way better than the M1 for less money. Well, you would be sacrificing the most important and most expensive part of a computer, the display and the quality of build. So you wouldn't have any keyboards or speakers or microphones, but you would get the most powerful chip Apple has ever made. That's the thing, you got a way out. If you have a good display and a good keyboard, you should be fine. But if you don't, pay attention and just get an M1 iMac or even get a M1 MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. When you're deciding between Apple's Apple Silicon desktops, which right now we know it's the M1X Mac Mini or M1 Mac Mini or even the upcoming Mac Pro, but we are not sure when that device is coming, so let's leave the, that and Mac Pro for later. So first of all, the M1 Mac Mini is just $700 and you can get it a pretty good deal for it for lower than that, like $500 or $600, which is just insane for a computer with that powerful chip. Well, the M1X Mac Mini follows the same path as the M1 Mac Mini. So the performance is amazing, but you have to get in mind that you don't have any displays, keyboards and other hardware to add for that. So if you configure a Mac Mini and you want to buy an external display with the same quality as the iMac or MacBook Pro's display, you will find yourself spending more money than actually buying the M1 iMac or the M1X iMac or the MacBook Pros. So my opinion, buy the M1X Mac Mini wherever you have a display or a keyboard and a pair of speakers. Then the performance of the Mac Mini. As we know, this Mac Mini will feature the M1X, which is just ridiculous. Uh, I think right now the M1, it's powerful enough for almost everything I do. The only thing that I'm kind of sketchy is video editing and 3D modeling so, and rendering. So right now I'm kind of hoping for an M1X Mac. MacBook Pro. For me, it's the best to take to university. But the M1X Mac Mini, it's a very viable option for those who want even more powerful desktops than the M1 Mac Mini, but don't want to spend a lot of money. So if the performance is all about you, get M1X Mac Mini. If you don't want any stupid performances and very high numbers and you don't do anything that kills the M1, go for the M1 Mac Mini. You won't get that much. But there's something that differentiates these two computers other than performance, and I think it's the most important part of these two computers, which are the ports. The M1X Mac Mini is kind of an upgraded version on every way of the M1 Mac Mini. So in terms of ports, you would get four Thunderbolt 4 ports and one HDMI, one uh, Ethernet 10 gigabyte port, one uh, I think one or two USB A's. So you would get even more I.O. than the M1 Mac Mini. So probably the same I.O. as the iMac Pro from 2017, which would be just insane. 
And if you are a person that worries about that, spend the extra $500 and just get the M1X Mac Mini, which is $1,100, isn't that, isn't that expensive for a computer with that performance? And I think it will be capable of outputting a good image to Apple's new and upcoming, probably, we don't know yet, Jan Porsche just talked about a little bit, a cheap Apple display, around $1,000. A Pro Display XDR-like, but without the XDR tech. So just a nice display from Apple, bezel, no bezels, no chin, nothing thin, and 4K 60 probably, or 4K or 5K 60, like the iMac displays. That would be insane and very cool. Probably a 32 inch, in my opinion, would be very cool and very usable, but if Apple decides to reuse its 27 inch old iMac panels, I would be fine with that. So use a 5K display, 27 inch, but remove the chins and everything else. So you would make a very good companion for the M1 Mac Mini or the M1X Mac Mini. But this in mind, I believe that even if you get a $1,000 Apple display, which is 5K and 27 inch, and you get the M1X Mac Mini, you will be looking around $2,100. And probably the 32 inch or 30 inch iMac that is coming with the M1X this year, or at least at the, until the end of the year, will cost probably less than that, the base model. So Apple would make the buying things separately cheaper in a way, but expensive in other ways. So for example, you would get a Monex Mac Mini and you get a display. Think about it, you would spend $2,100, but you don't have any keyboard or mouse or even touch ID or a good pair of speakers and microphone. So what Apple does is like they put the starting price of the 30 inch iMac at $2,100, the same price, for example. And you would be looking and saying, well, I could get an Apple, the same display, the same performance, but I will be losing with the keyboard and mouse. And so you would go for the iMac and the iMac sales increase. But I think a new display from Apple is necessary. I believe that everyone that has a MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro or even older models would like to have a bigger display to make a setup at home and take the computer to university, to school, to work. So I think Apple is missing the opportunity of creating a cinema-like display for at least $1,000, which is quite expensive still. And a lot of people would buy it. Me, for example, I think I would buy it. But what do you think about this idea of the display? And the comparison between the M1 and M1X Mac Mini, is it cool? Well, before we finish this video, I want to talk about the Mac Pro. The Mac Pro, as we know, it's a quite different product from Apple. It's aimed at companies and small studios that want to build the most amount of performance and they don't care about the money they spend. So right now, we have the Intel Mac Pro, which goes over $50,000, which is just ridiculous and no one has the money for that other than big companies. So Apple, in my opinion, will decrease the starting price, which is $6,000 to probably three to four thousand dollars so you would get the iMac Pro experience without display and keyboard and speakers and all of that because I believe Apple will release a new iMac Pro I think I'm not sure for now let's watch what Apple do in the next couple of months but the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Air indicate that Apple is kind of wanting to update all their lineup even when it doesn't make that much sense. For example, the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch doesn't make that much sense when you look at it with a bigger spectrum because you have the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Why would, would you have want to have a 13 inch MacBook Pro for $300 less? Well, that's because Apple wants to have it a little cheaper with a bit less specs and to convince people to get an M1, M MacBook Pro. So I think the Mac Pro will be the same as to the iMac Pro. So the Mac Pro will have the same specs as the iMac Pro, but without the cool hardware like the mini LED display or the Pro the XDR display tech that the iMac Pro might have. So this Mac Pro will start at three, four thousand dollars but you could configure it probably till ten to eleven hundred dollars. Apple won't surpass that and they will keep the Intel Mac Pro for those who want to spend fifty to sixty thousand dollars and want to work on x86 architecture so my opinion 
if you want to compare the M1 X Mac Mini and the Mac Pro, you can't make that much of comparison because the Mac Pro, it's that much expensive and serves a different kind of market. So if you might be, if you want to compare computers and Apple desktops, compare the M1 Mac Mini against the M1 Mac, M1 X Mac Mini and against the iMacs that they, they are coming, but those are easy to differentiate because you can simply think, do you want a display and keyboard and touch ID or you just want a computer part? So that, that's it. I think that's the easy choice you have to make. And the Mac Pro doesn't fit on that category because everyone who wants a Mac Pro already knows that. So what do you think of this video? What do you think about App Apple's silicon desktop future? Do you think the Mac mini M1, it's the perfect computer and the perfect value? Or do you think that the upcoming redesigned M1X Mac Mini that John Prosser leaked would be the next big thing for bang for your buck? Or are you that crazy guy that buys the Mac Pro? Let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Turn on the notification bell there. It's easy. Come on. Receive the notification when my video comes out. This is thanks for talking to you here.